We are going to be diving deep into a great conversation with the Port of Shelton here today. And to continue on with some of the conversations we were having last week, I'm happy to continue to have Wendy Smith here, Port of Shelton Executive Director, and Tony Ives from Northwest Pearl. Good morning to you both. Good morning, morning. Jeff. Thanks for coming back on. Thanks for having me <laughs> last week, and having her. We, <laughs> we talked a lot about Northwest Pearl last week, and, and we uh, failed, I think, to a lot any time to Port of Shelton. <laughs> Oh, no, no, so no. Wendy, is there anything yeah. that you want to share with us uh, moving forward here? No, I think I'm good. I'll I'll pass the <laughs> pass the mic over yeah, back but, to Tony. But I right. did I, what I didn't get to say last week that I do want to say is in terms of all of our cannabis tenants, but in particular. Um, you know, Northwest Pearl and, and all of them, um, they really filled a void at the Port of Shelton where we were, you know, we had vacant buildings, um, vacant land, and we, you know, it, it really was good timing for us. So this partnership is huge. And so I just wanted to say thank you to Tony and, and all of them um, yeah. that, that it's been great. I mean, they've all, they're all fantastic tenants. They've really um, brought more employees on, you know, I mean, that's, that's really what we're all about is business and employees. And so I didn't get to say that last time. So Thank you. I'll, Wendy. Feel, I'll say that. Is that what you wanted to say? <laughs> that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> uh, and we're just about out of time. <laughs> Okay. We're not here. So, Tony, last week we were talking to you, and you were <laughs> just about to head to Olympia to talk to the Liquor and Cannabis Board for uh, quarterly meetings, right, that you guys talk with them on issues going on with 502 and things like that. How was it last week, and right. what's going on this I, I, week? It was really uh, participating on the Liquor Control Board Advisory Panel as yeah. a member of SAGE. Uh, SAGE is a sound artist and growing ethics, and, um, you know, we work with uh, small and medium-sized growers to represent uh, the vo voices. Mm -hmm. It was interesting. It was great. There were um, participants from Eastern Washington, large farms, and participants for from all the big uh, alliances uh, around the state. And also the board, uh, LCB board, was there. Rick Garza, the director, and and. Um, it was very well represented. What were some of the concerns that maybe brought forth not only by you and Sage, but also by the folks at the board uh, talking, flushing this thing out? Literally, there was so much that we talked about and it's hard to highlight everything. So um, number one, uh, it was very interesting. Uh, the state uh, is going to be aggressive. When I say the state, LCP is going to be aggressive about identifying canopy space, how much canopy space there really is. There seems to be a lack of understanding. On one hand, uh, the some say there's a glut. On the other hand, they actually admitted that they didn't know how much canopy space mm -hmm. actually was. For example, so say you have a 10,000 square foot warehouse. Mm -hmm. Well, how much of that do you really use to grow? You have your office there, yeah. you have other things. Maybe right. you're only growing 5,000 square feet of canopy space, but on the LCB site, they have a lot at 10. So there's no uh, measurement that they have yet implemented to to understanding what that actually is and so within the next two to three months and we're going to be participating in that process identifying how much canopy space exists and if you let me go one step further the reason is there's a lot of producer processors that haven't gone uh that either pending application about 218 and then there are wow. some that haven't even started for whatever reason so the lcb is going to start calling that number down wow so hmm. Is there, if you have a 10,000 square foot facility and you only are using 5,000 uh, of canopy space, are you allowed to then, does the liquor can, cannabis board say you have, your allotment is 10,000, so you can get to that point? You or? can you can always get to that point. You can max them out, maximize your space uh, if you can. And with all the pending applications, is there a set canopy size number statewide that they're trying there to... isn't oh, okay so right now there's a uh just call it 12 million square feet of canopy space that's that it, pro probably 13 million that's legally approved but who knows what is actually growing it's something a lot less than that is there still some um holdover from you know the before 502 passed uh, and the medical side of the marijuana uh, cannabis industry moved into uh, the uh, recreational and how that all worked out whatever uh, there was a lot of talk about it being the wild west and nobody really knew what was going on with the medical side has that all kind of been 
taken care of now? No, there, there's still transitions in place. For example, um, the co-ops and the co-ops that are specifically for medical purposes. Uh, it's very interesting because the LCB are, are still trying to figure out those rules. The one thing that we wanted to note as part of SAGE is there's no veterans representation on that board and specifically about this type of of um of issue right uh, mm -hmm. because it is for medical purposes and we do recognize that the veterans have a pretty big uh need mm -hmm. and so we would like we suggesting that they increase their stakeholders and include veterans in that what are some of the goals for sage uh to get the, the point across to lcb what would you like to see eventually happen well Sometimes it's hard for me to distinguish my personal goals as right. Northwest Pearl <laughs> and then the organizational goals because we represent so many people. Um, um, but more than anything, Jeff, is to have a have a, a voice on all the rules and regulations, have more transparency with the, within the state, also um, represent the small to medium size uh, farmers and retailers because the rules are becoming slanted toward the larger guys mm -hmm. and it'll squeeze out uh, everything else. I'll tell you, uh, just from the standpoint of the Secretary of State, when they were doing the initiative originally, everybody who voted, well, not everybody, I don't want to speak for the entire population, mm -hmm. but uh, one of the objectives was, uh, you know, small to medium sized stores, but it's hard for everyone to survive when people put their life savings into this, um, when the rules are you know, geared towards the larger guys. So we want to represent those those uh, those farmers and have that voice. It sounds kind of like how, uh, if we look at it on uh, alcohol, how the major beer uh, manufacturers kind of squeezing out the, the smaller. That, that's guys. exactly how it happened. Unfortunately, you know, they're lobbyists, and um, and even last week, just recognizing how you have to uh, play the game. Yeah. So again, this is this was my first participation on the board, and it's so important that we all participate. So I just want to say one more thing: yeah. uh, the the website again, uh, Joanna. She is so responsive for the state. I really appreciate her. It's rules at lcb.wa.gov for any public commentary. Today is the last day to do that. Okay, very good. And then you're going to be back at the Capitol talking more with folks. Not or, today. Not today. Okay. Not today. Well, good. Uh, well, this was a good conversation over the last couple of weeks, and you can hear the first part of it again on uh, ifiber1newsradio.com as we talk with Tony Eyes from Northwest Pearl at northwestpearl.com on Port of Shelton property here too. Wendy Smith as we Thanks get so ready to fun. wrap things up here on a Wednesday. <laughs> we'll surface on out and uh, uh, yeah, thanks for coming on and Thank talking Thank you so with much, me. Jeff. It's nice to see you. you. Thank you.